Hey, my name is Thomas and today let's shoot dragonflies and uh, of course we do it the Tom's camera style that means let's shoot dragonflies uh, the low budget way, the cheapskate way. I brought a digital camera, it doesn't really matter which one this time, it's an Olympus, which is perfect of course because of the two times crop factor for yeah small stuff. And I brought a vintage 135mm lens, again it doesn't really matter which brand. Today I've got a, a Pentacon lens from Eastern Germany, but any 135 will do. Uh, and an adapter and a small extension ring, that's it. We're here at a beautiful nature spot uh, outside the city of Tilburg in the Netherlands. It's called Berg of Frau uh, There's an abundance of nice damselflies and dragonflies. And uh, the thing of my video today is you don't need a macro lens to shoot these sort of big insects uh, or also butterflies, but you rather want a telephoto lens and I'm going to show you why. So let's have a go. Now here's the fun fact, if you want to shoot big insects like dragonflies, damselflies, butterflies, you don't need a dedicated macro lens, instead you rather need a telephoto lens. I reckon everything between like 100, 135, 200 millimeters is perfect to do the job. If you don't have any special lens, just take your kit telephoto zoom, it will do the job. It will get you, you know, it will put some distance between you and the insect. A dedicated macro lens, that's more something you need if you really want to zoom in very, very closely, like maybe take a, a portrait only of the eyes of a dragonfly, something like that. But if you want to show the whole creature in nature, you don't need a macro lens. Just start with a telephoto lens. That's basically my first uh, suggestion. And apart from that, you only need uh, any digital camera. It doesn't matter if mirrorless or DSLR. APS-C or MFT, the cropped sensor cameras, are more practical even than full frame, but you can do it with any camera. And the third thing is accept and protect nature. That's very obvious, but that's again where the telephoto lens helps. You don't have to get so close to the subject and you don't have to step on every, you know, often at the shore, for example, there are very delicate plants and stuff. You don't have to step on that, you want to watch your step. A telephoto lens again helps you to do that. And that's all the equipment it needs. It's, it's a 135mm telephoto lens, an adapter because it's a vintage lens and the camera. Uh, these vintage lenses normally have a close focus of like, this one has got 1.7 meters. That sounds a lot for a big dragonfly, it's not even too far away. You, when I'm standing here, many of these creatures will be like one and a half meters or even a little bit further away. So that's why it's so handy that this is a telephoto lens and especially on a micro for thirds body it gives you the reach of a 270 millimeter on full frame. That's pretty a far reach. If you have to get closer, there are these extension rings. They just go between the lens and uh, yeah, either the mount or between the lens and the adapter. Uh, it's just a hollow tube, you know, and what it does is it puts the lens further away from the sensor and thus it makes you focus much closer when you attach this thing. Keep in mind that with a vintage lens these work perfectly. If you are using modern lenses you maybe don't want to use extension rings because modern lenses have internal focusing. That means that inside the lens individual lens elements move back and forth when you focus close and when you just add an extension ring at the rear of the lens that throws out the whole thing uh, of its specifications and image quality can suffer. But with these old lenses, extension rings are perfect. And apart from that, what can I say? Give it some time. Just spend some time here out in the nature. Just watch how it unfolds in front of your eyes and have the camera ready. Watch your step move slowly and carefully. It's a little bit like hunting, really. 
I find it's great fun to do this and actually it's, this is how I started photography when I was a child. My parents gave me a small camera at the age of six years and I started chasing damselflies. The camera couldn't do it back then, but <laughs> what did I know? The enthusiasm has uh, started and never left me since then. Just a few words about the recommended settings. My personal recommendation is to use a shutter speed that is throttled and tuned at 50 of a second. Even though you've got stabilization maybe in your telephoto lens, there's always a little bit of wind going on. And in a close-up shot, you know that even though a small movement is sort of magnified very quickly. So 250 of a second or even 500 of a second is my recommendation. As for apertures, start with anything between a 5.6 and maybe f8, so you get some depth of field, but at the same time some background blur, which always looks nice. And the ISO, just put it on auto. Even if you end up with ISO 1000 or something, modern cameras can handle that. That's really your least concern. Any camera can get the job done, but actually the Pan F is a very good macro camera. It's got the tilty flippy screen and for this it's really helpful because sometimes you need to change your perspective or you need to get a little bit closer and then you can walk. Uh, and it's got the micro four third sensor, which is again good for macro shots and in body stabilization. What can you ask more for? So much for shooting dragonflies and damselflies on the cheap. I paid 30 euros for this uh, bargain 135mm lens and already got all the fun that I could ask for. I hope you liked and enjoyed this video, maybe even found it useful. If you've got any questions or comments, leave a comment in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. That's it for today. Thanks for watching Tom's Cameras. Live long and prosper. Have a great time and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.